thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, as Mark said, I work for Fiserv um, and I represent our carrot business, which is our business for enterprise merchants. We're a global fintech <clears throat> and payments company, um, but in terms of carrot, and you see the, the carrot where that myself and Holger Legali down here are sporting in the room, um, this is what we do for our large uh, customers. So. We're very, very lucky and fortunate to have Marissa Select here from Selecta, who have been a client of ours um, in the unattended space for a number of years. So I suppose I'm, you know, the best way <clears throat> for everybody to understand payments is really to hear it from the people who, who live and breathe it, the, the customers who, who do it every day. So Marissa, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you've had a busy schedule and you've got two more conferences to get to over the next couple of days. And with all the transport strikes, it's, uh, it's pretty tricky. Thank you so much for taking the time. So can you tell us a little bit about you? And, and, and I'm intrigued. How did somebody from Minnesota end up coming to live and work in Switzerland? Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. It's wonderful to be here. And um, certainly, I, uh, as you say, I grew up in Minnesota in the United States, um, but I had the opportunity to do my MBA at INSEAD, uh, which brought me over into Europe. And then from there, I had the opportunity as well to, to go to uh, the different places that Mark was just mentioning. Uh, quite a lot of uh, different companies I've had the opportunity to work for and, and then brought me through Nestle to, uh, to Switzerland, where I just love the, love the lifestyle here in Europe more generally. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to live. So, um, I suppose we're going to start with the, the consumer journey. Um, you, would, you know it better than we do, but we've also been partnering with you um, for a few years now. So talk to us about, I suppose, your, you know, your decision to, to come and work with us and you know, what you were trying to achieve with the customer journey. Absolutely. Um, when we look at the, the decision, I think it was end of 2020, where we had the opportunity to get started with uh, with Fiserv and really have them be the, have you guys be the, the one payment provider across the the markets. Uh, we work in 16 different markets, have quite a, a wide variety of, of machines out there, 365,000 machines that we're actually servicing uh, for our clients every day. Um, and we needed for those uh, wide variety of machines, we needed to have a, a payment provider that was able to give us something that's simple, that's easy for the consumers to use, that offers them a seamless and a secure transaction at the end of the day. Um, people, when they go for their, what we, off, what we offer people is food and beverage. So basically you get your coffee, you get your snack when you're at a train station at the airports, uh, you have your hot meal when you're having the, your lunch. People just want to focus on that food. They want to, to get that food or that beverage. They don't want to have to think about the payments they're after. So we needed to, to make sure that we had a partner who could really offer that seamless experience for the consumers. Um, and that's what we've been putting in place now in the last two, two three years. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. Payments has to be part of it, but it should be invisible. You, you were trying to take friction out of the journey. Maybe you can talk to us about the changes. Like, What were the key things that changed from before you worked with us to afterwards that helped you achieve your customer journey objectives? Absolutely. So we came from, from a wide variety of different suppliers, first of all, that we were working with. Um, we wanted to consolidate and wanted, that. And exactly. It had to be really consolidated. One payment provider across all of Europe. That's obviously a bit of a challenge, especially when you're talking the, the self-service models. Um, so we needed to have that, uh, that consistency, that ability for us to always know what's happening in terms of the funding that's going into each of our different clients and be able to have that visibility across all the markets and across all the clients we work for. We also needed to make sure that the consumers at the end of the day, that they have something that's really easy and that's fast. As you said, consumers don't want to have to think about the, the payment at the end. They want to, to focus on their food and their beverage and the payments is really secondary, something they don't have to think of. And what was the speed differential from before and after, let's say? Obviously, you had a, a multitude of providers, so maybe you could give us an average from before and then the Exactly. I mean, it really situation. varies market by market. Um, unfortunately, we don't have all of the, the specifics from, from before, but certainly we've had a lot of consumers who've written to us. And obviously, if you think about a consumer who's going out of their way to write to the, to the company they're buying a, a product from, it, it's a big difference. They've said, wow, where they're able to, to offer right now, they, they see the difference. They see that they don't have to think about it. They actually get the, they get the confirmation of their product immediately. Um, that's something, you know, kind of right now, it's maybe one, two, three seconds before we're talking more 10, 11, 12, and that's obviously a, a very big difference for somebody standing in front of a machine and wanting that uh, that joy moment right then. Yeah, and, and it's interesting you said it because you mentioned earlier on, I mean, train stations is a good example. Mm -hmm. I, I see selected machines all the time now on, on 
on the side of platforms and train stations. And I suppose, you know, that difference between three and ten seconds makes a difference if you're if you know your train's about to come and you're trying to grab something quickly, right? Absolutely. For us, it means more sales. For our clients, it means more sales, and it means the joy for that individual because they're able to get their their candy bar, their bag of chips, their water bottle, yeah. whatever it is, and still make their train. And another interesting thing you mentioned was data insights. You said that, you know, that's a key part of your business model, the, the, the insights and the data about stock keeping unit levels and what, what's there so that either a technician has to come and refill, you know, a, a fridge or, or, you know, or a coffee machine, or indeed uh, they have to come and fix something because something's not working. Can you talk to us about the data insight that, you know, you're able to leverage and that you need it ultimately to run your business? Absolutely. I mean, you can imagine uh, with all these different machines, we need to actually know what are the products that are out of uh, that are out of uh, out of stock at a given point in time. And it's one thing we've actually worked with uh, with Fiserv to put in place, where we don't need an additional uh, stock keeping uh, system. We can go get rid of other uh, other technologies that are there. Right. And run everything through Fiserv and be able to actually see, you know, the, the Mars bars is out, this, uh, this bag of uh, Walker's chips is out, whatever it might be. And then we can send our, our teams there at the right moment to make sure that we, we are as efficient as possible in our operations. And that was using our event-based technology because we send you, we, we created events. So every time there's somebody buys something and something is removed from a fridge or one of your devices that triggers an event which ultimately feeds into your data lake giving exactly. you that insight exactly and something that we get that that data directly from you and then on our side we're able to to manipulate it and make sure that it goes into the operational uh, operational processes that we have that we can get our our employees out there as quickly as possible excellent one of the other things you mentioned and it's again it's all about the friction and removing that friction previously you had a chip and pin set up and in some cases it was chip only and exactly. maybe tell everybody how that you, you, you were very focused on moving to contactless. Exactly. Right? Now, in the past, when we've had different uh, different providers, uh, we actually didn't have, in many markets, as many people here will know, uh, you have uh, you have limits that you have to reach. And after a certain point, for instance, uh, 50 euros in uh, in France, you can no longer just use the, the contactless payments. Um, so what we mm. hadn't had at that point was the ability for us to go in and put in a pin. Now, you can imagine, I mean, we're talking, we're talking water bottles, uh, you know, bags of chips. It's not like you're going to get to 50 euros on a particular particular purchase. So in a lot of cases, you wouldn't think about it. But actually for us, it makes a very big deal. When, a, when an individual has gotten to that limit of 50 euros, they need to be able to, to make that, make that uh, payment and be able to, to put in their PIN. Um, so that's something now with the new technology that we've put in place, that you can actually make the, the PIN happen at whatever point in time. We've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback as well from our own, uh, our own associates who now are happy that they can get that extra, that extra coffee during the day. They don't have to go out and buy something else at the the corner shop down the road, but they can just do it right in the in our own uh, our own locations. Excellent. And we know that ourselves. I mean, uh, both ourselves, Fiserv and AB Merchant Services, we have these uh, selected machines in our buildings now across Europe. So very, uh, very helpful, very, very convenient and very fast. One of the other things you mentioned, obviously, it was 16 countries, you had multiple providers, you also wanted to add in alternative payment methods, not just card payments, okay. so that you could reach that addressable market for, for every single um, demographic of, of consumer. Talk to us about what you needed and, and where you've ended up on Absolutely. that journey. When you look at the 16 different markets, obviously there's different uh, APMs that are really critical in each market. I'm thinking Vips or Swish in the Nordics, Twint obviously in Switzerland. Um, there's very, very key payment methods that needed to be available as well as we built out this uh, the system. So now uh, through the through the partnership, we're able to, to pinpoint what specifically is needed in every single market, be able to work with the local market teams to make sure that that's actually in place and is tested with a wide variety of machines from our side uh, to make sure that it's uh, it's performing. Excellent, excellent. So we might pivot a little bit now. Um, we've spoken about the consumer journey. Obviously, then the the next key element of all of this is your merchants. So the you know whether it's a hospital or a university or a train station, who have the machines. You know you're you're obviously um, you're reaching directly to the end consumer, but obviously the merchants that you supply these uh, devices to are, are critical. So talk to us about what you were trying to achieve in the journey there and. And, and how that's going. Absolutely. I mean, 
for us, is we're kind of a B two B two C organization, as you were saying. Uh, it's it's critical that we really sell in the products within the within the different clients that we have. Uh, so we're talking uh, we're talking the train stations, the airports, the hospitals, the schools, what have you. Um, and for a lot of these different uh, these different clients of ours, um, they care for you know depending on the sector, very different uh, very, very different requirements. It can be a matter of really needing that data to understand who are the consumers who are coming through, what kind of products are they providing and purchasing. How do we make different uh, make different promotions happen? Um, so that's something that we're working together to be able to get that level of data back to our different uh, our different clients. Other clients, if you're looking at a, a hospital or you're looking at a university, they really care about differentiated pricing. So we need a different way for them to be able to, to offer a, a lower price for their own employees than for the guests that are actually there. Um, so also working to, to put in place then different, uh, different pricing schemes, different abilities for people to have discount codes, somewhat re replicating in a way uh, what you can have with different uh, closed loop systems, but then obviously making that very specific to the different clients that we have. Um, so depending on, the, depending on the client, it's a, a very different need that we're working together to address. Exactly, because you have such a range of clients, and and you know th those those requirements for those merchants, specifically the staff discount, is obviously fundamental for some of the businesses that you're trying to work with. You Sorry. mentioned something uh, to me, interest, uh, something very interesting last week. I mean, w most people would know you for food and beverage, but actually through COVID, you were selling lots of other products. Maybe talk to us about that, and and maybe the complexities of how, you know how do you fit them into the machine, and does all of that work? Easy? Easily when people are trying to take them out. Absolutely. So it's uh, it's been a, a fun couple of years trying to figure out what actually is is needed by our clients and our consumers. Uh, but certainly through COVID, I mean uh, things like hand disinfectant, face masks, all of these became much more important. And a lot of especially if you're talking around trains or the planes, I don't know how many times I've forgotten my own face mask during that time. You walk into the airport and you say, "Oh shoot, I need to to get something so I can actually get on that plane." Um, so we've had those uh, obviously had to change a lot with our logistics in the back end, make sure pricing is right for these different products. Um, and then ensure that obviously it, it fits in the different uh, variety of machines that we have and the different spirals that, uh, especially in the, the out there traditional vending machines. Excellent. And are, have you got other products that you're thinking about now or planning to launch? Absolutely. Into? We're always on the, the lookout for the next thing. Um, so we're doing a variety, uh, for instance, in different uh, workplaces where we're doing more canteen replacements. Um, mm. You mentioned as well in the, in your offices, I know you have the, the hot food solutions, whether it's fresh food. Um, we have a steamer that allows you to get uh, yeah. very fresh, uh, fresh pastas in less than 90 seconds. And um, we're also looking right now at hotels, for example, where we can build, uh, build more of an alcohol sales uh, base. Obviously, if you go into a hotel you don't want the the people at the front desk always having to to sell uh, sell different uh, different products as people walk through but now through the self-service option people can also go in and and you know purchase their their wine for the night exactly and you've really helped companies because obviously since covid companies have had to redesign how they operate and and you know there have been staff shortages in certain areas and you know if we think about companies that are either fully remote or hybrid maybe not the same amount of people are there so maybe a canteen that or a restaurant they had running in an office before no longer makes e economic sense and then you've been able to come in with i think you term it micro markets is that the industry term exactly very well done <laughs> thank you so you've been able to kind of meet that need and help companies and businesses i suppose find a way to provide food and refreshments but manage cost at the same time and ultimately not need the same amount of staffing would that be Absolutely. I mean, the, at, the, at the heart of what we we're doing at Selecta, we're always looking at what are, what are the things that our clients are needing. And um, we're not a company that just goes out in there and says, hey, you know, we have this, this solution that gives you great coffee or the solution that, that just provides you, you know, the, the standard, uh, standard vending fare. Um, but we've always been looking at, at understanding what the clients really need. And then through COVID, we understood that actually the clients right now, they're caring about how they can take care of their employees when they don't know how many times their employees are coming into the office during a given week. Um, obviously, that puts a lot more pressure on them when it comes to the to the canteens uh, because they they have a lot of a lot of labor costs a lot of up upfront and running costs for these uh, for these canteens that's where we've been able to come in and offer them uh, a wide variety of different uh, different food options um, and also moving from there into as well different self service store options and um, so we've opened a couple of uh, self service locations you can get anything from flowers to fresh baked products to uh, the different you know salads and sandwiches that you kind of expect um, so really trying to figure out what each specific client needs and then tailoring our offer to that. And where can you give us an example of some of the locations where you have the self-service shops? 
Absolutely. So one of the biggest ones is in the uh, Corda campus at the moment. Uh, it's uh, an organization in Belgium uh, where they have a number of, you know, thousands of different employees who are there on a regular basis. Um, so it's right at their reception area where they can go in and be able to, to use uh, use basically one of the, the Pfizer readers to, to scan their way in. Um, it's kind of a, a pre-authorization. They can go in, they can have 20 different people at one point in time, pick up whatever they want. And then on their on their way out, they can just walk out and they pay for what the, the products they've actually actually taken with them um, and we're rolling that out now as well in some hospitals in uh, in switzerland and more to come excellent and i know select is a uh, very focused on helping the community as well that's something that's obviously your role you know you're very focused on sustainability with your role but also giving back to the community can you can you talk to everybody about what you as select are doing to help um people in the community absolutely i'd say we have a lot of different uh, volunteering and, and local community initiatives, but the one that I'm really excited about, and unfortunately I still can't say the, the name we're about to work with, um, but we're building up a partnership right now with an organization that helps the homeless, uh, basically sells coffee, and through the sales of coffee, puts all of the profit back into people who are homeless. And it's not just giving donations to the people, it's actually working with them. Um, they've identified that roughly 44% of people who are homeless are homeless, but they want to work. They want to, to be able to get back into, into society, get off the streets. Um, so they work and they find those individuals and then help them to get a home, to get a bank account, um, to find a job. They train them, they give them therapy and make sure that they're able to, to really have a new opportunity for them. So we're, we're working right now with this organization to get that partnership up and running and to be able to, to really expand them across Europe. Brilliant. So how many countries, when you get it up and running, how many countries across Europe will that be in? So certainly we're going to put them across all of the 16 markets that we're in right now, but I expect with our export business, which we also have in terms of selling coffee, I expect we're going to go well beyond the 16. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's something you should be very proud of. And, um, and I think I understood that you maybe at Fiserv as well, there's some, some great work that you've also been doing around community and really bringing people into the, into the um, ability to pay. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of that. So um, we've been fortunate enough to be shortlisted this week, actually, for an award uh, for the best in-store award. But it's actually really a financial inclusion award um, yeah, initiative. So what we did was um, we partnered with all the major uh, carrot retailers we have in Poland. So typically grocery retail, but some a lot of the retailers that would have good opening hours across seven days a week. So. Um, some of the partnering companies who we set this up with and are live with are the likes of Jabka and Dino and Macro and Empic. And how it works is we have created a, a, a Know Your Customer app. So any person living in Poland can register on the app and um, go through the KYC checks. And once they're approved by Fiserv's Carrot, uh, Carrots um, app, then they're included in this program. And... Um, Basically, it's, it's a cash to card is the name of the program. It's all about financial inclusion. It's for people who are paid in cash who want to get access to the digital banking system. So they already have a bank account, but maybe the branch in their locality is closed down or maybe they just can't get to a branch during their working hours because the, you know, the, the hours in the branches are reduced. So we've partnered with these retailers because they typically open from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. seven days a week so people can go there on a friday evening after they've been paid in cash for example and once they put their visa card or their mastercard into the our, our terminal in one of our uh, carrot retailers then a deposit option pops up so they can hand their cash over and then instantly that cash is then um digitally trans transferred into their bank account so they can go and check their banking app straight away on their phone and see that the uh, the digital equivalent of that cash that they've handed over is in their bank account so it's been a tremendous success we launched it a few months ago um, and we're very proud that we've also we've we've put it into polish language english language but we've also put it into ukrainian language and we've had a huge uptake because obviously uh, since the war there have been a lot of ukrainians who have been uh, have moved to poland are working in in cash in hand jobs, but they want to be able to access that digital banking and, and payment ecosystem. And this gives them that opportunity to do it in, in a very, you know, easy and real time way. They don't have to wait to, to get access to, you know, a bank branch to, to do so. So excellent. Um, yeah, we're very proud of that one. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.